guys, do we got some news for you. Right here, I got my Blackstone Labs results from my second oil analysis after my track day in April at the Motor Enclave. It's awesome track in Tampa. If you guys haven't visited it, they are doing a lot more advanced track days. You definitely should check it out if you're in the area. A, a really cool, smaller track, but still technical and fun and fast. So a really good track. But onto the the meat and potatoes of this thing, the Blackstone Labs results. Now, this is the second time I run the Blackstone Labs. And before anyone jumps on me on the comments, this is not the Bible, but this is what I use to benchmark how the car has been doing. This is something that I just kind of use and start stacking data on data to see if the motor is progressively getting better, I mean, sustaining or progressively getting worse. If you're new to this channel and haven't seen any of the previous stuff that's kind of gone on with my 09 Z06, uh, when I first got this car about a year and a half ago, when it took it to over to a, a local dyno, got the car retuned where we found tons and tons of black smoke and we basically realized that we might have valve seals. We went ahead, pulled the heads off, did the valve seals. That was a whole conundrum in itself. There's a video for that on my channel if you want to see me rant about that. But there was a whole conundrum that happened there. We ended up having to pull the heads, put the heads back on, take them off again, put them back on. Car started to run good after that, long story short. Started getting my track sessions, did a Homestead session, a Sebring session, um, did a, and, and then the motor enclave session with the car. Every single time I've done a track session, there's been a couple things that are still standing out, and I'll talk about that in a second. The biggest one is every time I'm out on track, my back bumper gets coated with soot. Every single time I can come back and look like I am a turbocharged car just blowing black smoke everywhere or a diesel truck, my back bumper is covered, and I found active oil spots. That's always been the biggest of the concerns. The valve seals fixed a lot of the smoking conditions, but clearly at wide open throttle, pretty much at the tip top of my, of my band, it was still smoking. And on diesel, it was smoking as well. So we already started to assume that there might be a piston rim failure uh, and a breakdown of that that's kind of leading to the next issue on this car. What we tried to address in between that to continue tracking the car was one, we took in the first oil sample, which was when I was running the Motul 300V 0W40. And we did a couple things in between that. We put in the Mighty Mouse catch can, we cleaned out the intake manifold from any residual oil that was sitting in there. We re-routed uh, re the PCV system to see if we can decrease crankcase pressure. And no matter what we've done, maybe we've done small little adjustments to how much smoke is coming out of the car, but it is consistently smoked track session after track session after track session. Um, we sent in the oil sample and already some red flags started to come in. But we understand that it's the first sample and there was a lot that happened leading up to that first sample that I couldn't even really use it as a baseline. Because of the conundrum that happened with the heads being off, the poor craftsmanship of the mechanics, there was a lot of things going on. So they found elevated levels of silicone, they found a couple other things, but the biggest one that stood out to me was the elevated levels of copper, which meant that my bearings were starting to show wear, which leads me to believe why my oil pressures were the way they were. So after that first 0W40, I moved up into the 15W50 from Mobile One. I went with a very basic, you know, conventional, you can pick it off at Walmart if you want, 15W50, Walmart oil from Mobile One. And the reason why I did that was because my oil pressures at wide open throttle with the 0W40, while the temps were about 220 to 230, I would see 35 to 40 PSI at full wide open throttle. And I had seen as low as 13 PSI at hot idle. That is pretty bad. 15W50 mitigated that quite a bit. 15W50 keeps me at about 23 to 18 PSI at hot idle and keeps me at about 50 PSI at wide open throttle. But it comes with a caveat. 15W50 is a higher viscosity. It increased my oil temps, even though I vented my hood, up to about 265, which is about the highest I've seen. And it was a slightly warmer day when I tested it, but it wasn't a very hot day. It was still an overcast day. If I ran in these summer months right now where we're well above 90, that oil temp would get much, much hotter. So I finally got in the oil sample in for the 15W50. In between the transition from the 0W40 to the 15W50, there was a lot of oil back and forth and I was doing a lot of changes. Again, you can see in the other video about the heads being done incorrectly, et cetera. I, when I drained my oils to go to 15W50, 
Obviously, the 15W50 comes in a single gallon version, which is equivalent to five quarts. So I just buy two of those because this is an 0906, so it has about a 10 and a half quart system. I bought two of those, and I was not able to fill them. And I did strive for 10 quarts when I did the mold tool. But there was so much of a conundrum back and forth there that I didn't really worry about it. I said, okay, this is a little light on oil. Not that big of a deal. I don't know what's been done and what's not. When I submitted the 15W50, I obviously had to drain it after this April run and the motor on clay. I use the same exact 15W50, obviously new. I, I, I bought the same gallon structure. And when I drained it this time, I was shy three quarts of oil. Now that is a pretty big number for any car within the short amount of time. This car I've owned for a year and a half and I've put a thousand miles on the car. Majority of those are all track driven miles. In between this oil change in interval, there's probably no more than 200 to 300 miles on that oil. So for me to burn that much, there's clearly a big problem at hand. I got the results back. And for the record, here they are. I got the results back. Now my, my copper levels are still a little elevated, but now my aluminum levels are a little bit up, and which leads Blackstone to believe that there might be somewhere on the pistons as well and more and more things. For the record, I had this sent just to kind of see the values. The reality of this video is that this paper is irrelevant because at this point, I've had to make the decision that I will no longer track this car this year. I just can't continue to push the car knowing that one, I have weaker than normal oil pressure, which can lead to catastrophic damage. I'm clearly burning oil somewhere that I shouldn't. And on top of that, I'm still bleeding out of the exhaust. All kind of correlative to, correlative to each other, but they're all three major concerns that I need to address rather than just go and be greedy and you know go and race the car. So for the rest of this year, I'm basically this car just became a glorified uh, cars and coffee car, um, unfortunately, because I do need to give myself some time and survey my options. Option number one, which is not really one that I am too much considering just yet, which is sell the Z06 and either get a just a full track spec car or something really track focused, maybe a little bit less power, a little bit more reliable. Not really my intention right now. I really love the Z06 platform. I don't see myself selling this car and it would be wrong of me to just kind of push this problem onto somebody else. So that one is not really an option just yet. Option two is sending this over to a shop. So if you guys know a shop that you've actually worked with, drop a comment below. I don't mind trailering this car. I'm in Florida, so I'd like to stay on the East Coast, but I don't mind trailering this car anywhere if they're gonna give me a good deal and they're gonna make sure that this LS7 is reliable. I'm not looking for a max effort LS7. I'm looking for an LS7 that's just gonna be reliable and have a great time on track. That's all I'm asking for. Every time I show it the key, we start it up and we rip some freedom. And then option three, is where I'm leaning the most is, is to buy a short block kind of setup, either from like American Heritage Performance or maybe LME or you know maybe even K-Tech. Buy a short block, maybe even do some heads. Swap out most of the accessory drives and all that stuff from this motor, put it onto that one, and then sell the short block out of this car for someone that maybe wants a backup. For those that are not familiar with the LS7 platform, the Z06 motor from these cars, they're, they're discontinued. GM no longer makes these blocks. So you're either gonna find a LS3 board out to be an LS7, or you're gonna find a iron block 427, or you're gonna find a really expensive LS7 true to the core type setup. So it's a very expensive type of setup, but doing a short block, pulling my motor and selling my motor allows me to recoup some of my money and get the job done faster. But it does increase the likelihood of, er of errors because you're relying on me, YouTube certified mechanic, and a couple buddies and beers to put back this very meticulous motor back together. I follow Josh Van Velt for any Corvette guy probably does as well. And, you know, I watched his struggle and he had a really good guy kind of, you know, go through it with him. I have some awesome track buddies now that are more than willing to come down to South Florida with me and help me put it back together. But it is a timely and costly process, but it is something I am considering. I can create some cool content with you guys and I can share other you know, Corvette guys that are maybe not on YouTube and maybe convince them to get on YouTube. But those are my options. Sell the car, send it to a shop, or rebuild it myself. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think out of the three options. Like I said, if you do know a shop that you've actually worked with,
drop them in there. I'll reach out to them, see you know where their heads are at. If I gotta ship the car to them or drive a trailer to them, I can, that's not a problem at all. I don't plan to do anything till later this year. I'm going to recoup some time, figure out you know what's my best option. I'm not rushing in anything. The car still runs and drives. I'm just not tracking it because I can't be stupid enough to take it out there, window my LS7 block, and then now increase the cost to repair this car exponentially. So it's just one of those things of saying, okay, take a step back so you could take the proper step forward. I'm still gonna take it to Cars and Coffees. I'm still gonna create some content on it. If I find good deals on other parts that I need for the car, while I'm waiting, I'll buy them, put them on the car and all that stuff. But it sucks. I was really excited. We've been having some fun out on track, but it's just not worth, the juice is not worth the squeeze for me to go out there and you know hurt the car even worse than you know what it's doing. So if you've watched this far, I really appreciate it. Make sure you drop a like, share this video, subscribe to the video if you haven't. If you guys help me grow this channel, I can monetize it and I can make a couple bucks on it and just literally push all that money back into getting Vader back out on track. Um, but that's it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.